I have to say, just to point out, that if it wasn't, I'd be running away from it. And you can follow me if you wish. Um, the smoke is to represent the chemicals involved. What's going to happen is the crew are going to use as many control measures as they can, both to render for the safety of the public and the safety of themselves, of course. Uh, they're going to use... Um, In this particular case, the Chairman is the road for taking the response and operating, and the crew will begin and commence CPR life saving administration. Well, she could have been in that last one, I just didn't see that. I think that's coming out as well. This particular demonstration is just to illustrate the whole of our issue of our U.S. system that we have our medical response and the third and third response. I don't know what that's the perfect thing to do to me. We have five paramedics and every third response who can help in almost all aspects of it in terms of the nature. We also have advanced paramedics that can uh, deliver advanced life support. There's about 80 therapy in this call every year in Dublin. Uh, 350 of these are, are cardiac arrest, sadly. But because of the early intervention of both bystanders and the use of defibrillators, advanced life support and basic life support in a coordinated fashion by the Dr. Fireway PMS, outcomes are surprisingly good. And when I say that, the Dublin Fire Brigade is second only to Seattle, and when I say Dublin Fire Brigade, Dublin City is second only to Seattle in uh, the return to spontaneous circulation for cardiac arrest following it. So it is a, an extremely traumatic and dangerous event, I know, but outcomes once the chain of survival is managed to sort it. That's very vital. This is early recognition calling 999, early CPR, the identification and the early use of AEDs, which thankfully are more ubiquitous around our city now, and then advanced cardiac care. In this particular case, the young man collapsed, was fortunate enough to be quickly. The use of the automatic external defibrillator. And would you believe <laughs> And he's still being brought to hospital and checked out. A very simple demonstration, but one I think you should all take in and take to heart, because you could be the person who could help to save someone's life as part of that kind of survival. We've over 700 tech registered paramedics in the fire brigade, 80 advanced paramedics in the we attend all sorts of trauma and medical cases. We take the 1999 or 112 ambulance call from the city. And our training program is over two years. It's done in conjunction with partnership with the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland. And those successful uh, paramedics are also the Office of the Health Care Council. He should have been in that. The fact that we have paramedics for all an hour, that's not an hour. So, we're going to be
So what you're seeing now, ladies and gentlemen, is, is, is a bread and butter of the Forest Services called Conference. In this particular case, rescuing and extinguishing a fire within a, a structure. Tango 1 and Tango 2, the name of our fire line is what they're going to do. They're going to set up a DA entry control system. They're going to deploy various control measures and safety measures. <laughs> Crews going in to use the utilization of breathing apparatus, smoke curtains, smoke control devices, constant pressure ventilation, and they're making an early transition this night in a straight stream of water at the fire to change the conditions in the interior. The first PA crew of guns to entry control are going to deploy a very simple device called a right smoke curtain on the, on the door itself, so that when they put the curtain up and force the entry on the door, no air will get in to make the fire any more or sustain the fire any more than all. Control the ventilation in other words, or the flow path of air into the fire. Yes. So you stop it getting worse and well, getting more vigorous and so on. This particular aspect of the smoke curtain is the use of PPG and tactical ventilation as part of the, the crew's Tactical ventilation from Hartford for the neighbour training element. Uh, the crew are using their forceful entry techniques using a Halligan bar and a, a sledge, a very a brilliant but very useful tool. And crews are then committed using door entry techniques to go and search within. Obviously, it's dark, it's dangerous, it's hot. They've got breathing apparatus, they utilise thermal image cameras to enhance their search procedures. Um, They've got first aid hose wheel holes which they use to neutralise or to cool the fire gas within the fire. And basically it's dangerous and fraught with problems for this point group of young men who go in, make the rescue, stabilise the person, safely extract them and then extinguish the fire using utilising other breathing apparatus crews in coordination through the incident command system.
Hopkins up from there. Laura Flynn's back 28. Two of our recruits are experienced for the Forest Service. All our recruits went through a rigorous selection process. 22,464 workers completed, 81 GFP specialist instructors assistant. Uh, we had the, the wonderful help from the uh, DCC HR and Garda Street Corner, the Lewis, the Dublin Tunnel Commercial, Dublin Airport Fire and Rescue Centre, were fantastic to us. Our oldest recruit is age 48, our youngest recruit is age 22, the average age is 31. We 12 birthdays took place throughout, one birth took place during the course with one more imminent. Fantastic, so we believe the fire brigade baby. Uh, we've one recruited for them. So with three million litres of air consumed in the breathing apparatus, and it's cost five thousand dollars to a million and a half and a half. And 120 cars in New York City. The average number of steps day to day by these guys is one eighty million four hundred and eighty three. We just have our presentations to do. So I'm going to call on uh, some of the group to carry on with I'd like to call upon our wonderful Lord Mayor, Paul McCall, to say he's going to present the scrolls to these fine young men. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to save your, your poor hands, because you, you've been clapping feverishly all day, maybe you'll have the, a big clap at the end. I'm going to call them out in no particular order, but we'll call them out as recruit firefighters and then as firefighters when they're finished. Uh, firstly, yeah, yeah. Fire, recruit firefighter McLaughlin. Recruit firefighter Max Heber. Recruit firefighter Donnelly. Yeah! Recruit firefighter Redmond. Recruit firefighter Bakeson. Recruit firefighter Hunt. Recruit firefighter Lawler. Recruit firefighter Brannigan. Recruit firefighter Russell. Recruit firefighter Charles. Recruit firefighter Stanley. Recruit firefighter Bell. Recruit firefighter Larkin. Known as the popular Larkin. <laughs> Recruit firefighter Stephen. <laughs> Recruit firefighter McGowan. <laughs> Recruit firefighter Dorney. <laughs> Recruit firefighter Stewart. <laughs> Recruit firefighter Kiernan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Recruit firefighter Sloan. <laughs> Recruit firefighter O'Shaughnessy. Recruit firefighter Tilly. Uh, recruit firefighter Gettings. Recruit firefighter Marr. Uh, recruit firefighter Stafford. Recruit firefighter Kyo. Recruit firefighter McGuire. Recruit firefighter Kelly. Recruit firefighter Quinn. Recruit firefighter Corcoran. Recruit firefighter Timmons. Recruit 
firefighter Murphy. Recruit firefighter O'Rourke. Recruit firefighter Booker. Recruit firefighter O'Neill. And Fraterna, recruit firefighter McDonough. Just to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, the ladder climb was done at the, the ILAC, where the turn table ladder was broken, and the recruits kept on sustained ladder climbing to the extent that they eclipsed Everest, basically, and they generated 6,583 euros for Bumbilla. Ladies and gentlemen, just a little bit of a bobulence. Uh, Tony and uh, Mary Heffernan, uh, after the, the tragic loss of their kids, there should lean from. Thank <laughs> you. 